Welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. This is the first Legion focused video in our series of how to build a Legion. We debated on how to go through the Legions. Do we do a few at a time? Do we group them by tactics? Start at the first Legion and work our way down the line? Once we realized how in depth these were going to be, I decided to try something a bit different. While GW may cover the Legions in numerical order, we're going to mix it up and go in reverse. Starting with Alpha Legion and counting down the roster, we're going to cover the complexities and considerations of building an army for each of the Legions. Hopefully, this is useful not only to those interested in the Alpha Legion, but for all Legion players, giving them an understanding of the concepts behind army building in Horus Heresy and an idea of what each Legion can bring to the table. I hope you enjoy. Just a quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit those buttons down below. How to build an Alpha Legion army. We will cover off on four main areas. Firstly, how the box set enables each Legion. Secondly, how the Legion's special rules can be taken advantage of on the table. Thirdly, how rights of war impact unit selection. And lastly, whether any Legion Warlord traits change the way you might build and play your army. So, first up, the box set. It's a bit of a mixed bag with how useful the box set is for the Alpha Legion. Alpha Legion have a lot of uses for Marines, in particular tactical squads or veteran squads with Bane Strike Bolters are a lot of fun and super scary for an opponent, even if they are potentially overpriced. Uh, the denial range they encourage is probably enough to justify their points. You want to take these smaller squads that get the best advantage out of power daggers and venom spear upgrades. That seems that seems pretty optimal. Both tactical and heavy support squads will be useful in pretty much any Alpha Legion build, so you'll definitely use those beakies that you get in the box set. Whether you need 10 Cataphracti Terminators or not in an Alpha Legion army comes down to the right of war you pick. If you go down the coils of the Hydra right of war, you can definitely re-roll the box set Terminators. You just won't have the elite slots for them, let alone the points. The Headhunter Leviathan right of war certainly has more use for them, but if I had to choose and was ready to drop some cash, I'm probably going to take a beefy unit of Lernian, Lernian Terminators because the models are spectacular, even if they are hard to pronounce. Keep in mind that if you're taking Altharius, you probably don't need a Spartan either. Uh, Altharius can pass out Infiltrate or Deep Strike uh, to himself and three other units at the start of the game. So getting that, uh, needing that transport is less of a concern. With that covered, Let's have a chat about the Alpha Legion Special Rule. The Alpha Legion Special Rule lies and obfuscation and what army build that will support. Let's see, the rule itself reads, a model with this special rule is always considered to be two inches further away than it actually is when measuring range to it from any enemy model for the purpose of resolving a shooting attack, charge, or any reaction declared by an enemy model or unit. This is cumulative with any other modifiers to range imposed by special rules, such as night fighting or war gear. Now, I believe that special rule encourages range shooting and a counter-assault counter style army. Uh, just to clarify, if that wording's confusing, and I don't think it is, I think this is one of GW's better rules that they've written and that we've seen, because some of them are so wordy. This one's pretty simple. Uh, the enemy just has to add two inches to what they're trying to achieve for shooting attacks, charges, and reaction. So if they'd normally need a eight inch charge, for instance, which is pretty reasonable, uh, that goes up to needing to roll 10 on a dice to get it off. Shooting attack, it means the range of all their weapons are essentially uh, at minus two, uh, and reactions, there's so many complexities there, I'm, I'm just not gonna get into it, but that's what it's doing. So you really wanna exploit that extra two inches with uh, what you've got over your opponent and punish them for making mistakes, not to mention failing charges. A common Alpha Legion strategy, right of war dependent, will involve taking ample long range weapons to ensure your opponent needs to come to you and having a number of assault based units to make that crucial counter assault. So what you want it to do is make sure your opponent, their units are running up the table to you, you're, you're firing at them while it's happening, they're not able to get range on you as much at the same time because all their weapons are at minus two inches. And the big one is that when they go for that final assault, uh, the extra two inches there can make such a big difference and you really want to take advantage of a, of a failed charge or two to then make your own charges yourself. 
Now for that long range firepower, I think heavy support squads with las cannons, Volkite culverins and missile launchers are the better choice, so you're getting more weapons for your points. If you're making the enemy come to you, you don't need the maneuverability of vehicles that you're paying premium points for. And you can support these squads with apothecaries for added survivability, not to mention take better advantage of cover. You have a serious advantage to getting the charge off with Alpha Legion units, so picking assault based units that get a bonus for charging is a safe decision. A big assault squad is perfect for this, taking advantage of the ability to wait behind your lines that comes from their greater movement, and to then get those Hammer of Wrath hits when charging. Alpha Legion are rather unique in the way that they have a second Legion special rule, Rewards of Treachery. I will go into that in depth next as part of the Coils of Hydra Rite of War. So, secondly, Rite of Wars. The Rite of Wars and how they're going to impact your army building. The real spiciness of Alpha Legion comes down to what unit or units you're selecting for your Rewards of Treachery special rule. Now, for those that aren't aware, I'm not going to read the rule out verbatim, but the concept is you pick one single other legion other than your own, and you get to choose legion-specific units from that that are not unique, so not special characters, that you would like to include in your army. So a good example is if we look at the Iron Warriors, you could include some siege tyrants from the Iron Warriors in your army. Usually just one unit, but if you're running the Coils of Hydra special rule, you get to include three. So let's read out that Rite of War. The effects. A detachment using this Rite of War may include up to three of the units selected as part of the Rewards of Treachery special rule. Each of these units is paid for as normal and uses up the normal Force Org slots for a unit of that type as per the restrictions of the Rewards of Treachery special rule. All units selected as part of a detachment using this Rite of War by means of the Rewards of Treachery special rule gain the Fearless special rule until at least one other friendly unit has been deployed from reserves onto the battlefield. All units selected as part of the detachment using this right of war without the use of the rewards of treachery special rule, so this is your alpha legion units, gain a bonus of plus one to all to hit rolls made for them in all attacks, both shooting and melee, made during the t player turn in which they are deployed onto the battlefield. So just to cover off, what that means is you, you get three reward of treachery units. Uh, they don't all have to be the same unit. They do all have to come from the same legion. When they're deployed and you can only, uh, we'll get into this in a minute, you can only deploy the reward of treachery units at the start of the game. So those other legion units, they're all fearless until the rest of your army or parts of your army then come onto the table. And when you're other parts of your army, your, your organic Alpha Legion units, if you will, are coming onto the table. The turn in which they arrive, they get plus one to hit for shooting in melee. Now, limitations. All units selected as part of a detachment using this right of war by means of the rewards of treachery special rule must be deployed on the battlefield at the start of the first turn. They may not be placed in reserves or assigned to a deep strike assault, subterranean assault or flanking assault or any other deployment option that requires them to start in reserves. A detachment using this right of war must include a number of units selected without the use of the rewards of treachery special rule, equal to or greater than the number of units selected using the rewards of treachery special rule. These units must begin the battle in reserves or assign to a deep strike, assault, subterranean assault, or flanking assault, or other deployment options that require them to start in reserves. So essentially you're splitting your army in half, you've got those other legion units that you've selected, up to three, that are starting on the table and they're fearless, and the rest of your army, your organic alpha legion section of it, if you will, uh, is starting off the table in reserves and getting that bonus to hit when arriving. So what are the pros? Uh, the main pro of this, uh, the main benefit is you get three units from other legions. Super cool. Uh, there's some great choices out there that we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, normally, you only get one as an Alpha Legion army. army. Coils of Hydra, you get three. Uh, they are fearless for those first one or two turns, uh, maybe even more, depending on when your reserves come on, uh, until the rest of your army comes onto the table. Fearless is really good. Uh, there's You can't understate how great Fearless is, and it's quite rare within, uh, within second edition Heresy. So Fearless is fantastic. But the big one here is just the awesome narrative flavor. Uh, that comes with this right of war and just taking advantage of, of other legions and, and the shenanigans that goes with it. It's a lot of fun. It's very unique in the way it plays. So I think this is just a really fun right of war and, uh, and just really different. Now the cons, there are a few cons. So you've only got three units and potentially their transports, I might add, uh, on the table for the first turn 
and perhaps longer, maybe second turn, maybe even third turn. Uh, what this is doing is giving up early turns of potential objective scoring, depending on the mission, and, and at least letting your opponent get the upper hand with early game board control. It's also meaning that those units that start the game on the table are going to be more vulnerable because they're not going to have the support of the rest of your army and your opponent's going to be able to focus on them without worrying about, uh, I guess, uh, making themselves vulnerable to, uh, to other units than just those that are on the table, just the three, maybe more with, uh, with transports. So it also more so, uh, icon here, doesn't make great use of the box set. And I'll go into that uh, a little more, but essentially you're not going to want to use a Spartan, for instance. Uh, Dreadnoughts aren't great in this army. Uh, Beakies become, become less important because you're spending so many points uh, on those Legion units, but you, you'll still need them a bit. But the main ones being the Spartan and the Dreadnought just don't have great place in this army. Now the impacts, what are the impacts of this right of war on the way you're going to build an army? So you're going to favor a far more aggressive army that wants to be in transports or have the ability to deep strike. For the three units selected from other legions, I'd be tempted to go for units with longer range firepower and survivability. As I mentioned before, Tyrant Siege Terminators are the obvious choice. But you could equally go for assault units, and I think this is a bit more fun, with either inherent movement bonuses or transports to hit home at the same time that your second force, your Alpha Legion force, is arriving from reserves. In which case, Ultramarine Invictaris Suzerain squads, Imperial Fist Templar Brethren, or a mix of Raven Guard, Dark Fury, and more Dathan squads are all powerful and lore-driven choices. While narratively dubious, Galvorback squads would also do some serious work in this army, but I just couldn't justify it from a lore perspective. For the force arriving from reserves, I'd be taking characters and units with jump packs that still have some decent shooting, supported by close range tactical support squads in Rhinos. Note that the buff is for shooting and melee on the turn they deploy, so taking advantage of both is going to be key. Assault squads are the obvious choice, uh, backed up by apothecaries and beatstick praetors or centurions with jump packs. But having a couple of cheap tactical squads to walk onto your backline and secure objectives will also be vital. Remember that if you take Alpharius, you can deep strike three units, units at your leisure. Any units, I might add. But the rewards of treachery units are going to be pricey. Those, are, those elite other Legion units do not come cheap, so I don't think you can afford a Primarch in this build. You're going to want to avoid infantry with heavy weapons and vehicles that lose firepower when moving. Similarly, you'll be choosing units mostly from troops and fast attack, as you'll likely need those elite slots for the rewards of treachery units. So while destroyer squads sound fun in this build, you're probably not going to have room for them. I'd only be taking Dreadnoughts in this force if you're willing to pay the drop pod tax, uh, both in points and in cold hard cash. They're certainly, they aren't bad walking onto the table from reserves, but more maneuverable units of jet bikes and land speeders will find greater value coming in when it comes to supporting that aggressive force that I talked about before. We're also running into the elite slots limitation again. And yes, Leviathan Dreadnoughts are heavy sport, but they get real expensive real fast when you have to put them in a drop pod. I just don't think you have the point spare with all those juicy units from the other legions. Now, while all of that sounds like a lot of fun and will be very popular for Alpha Legion players, a more traditional force, and one that will likely be able to afford Alpharius, and I do love my Primarchs, uh, will be looking at the Headhunter Leviathal Rite of War. Now, this Rite of War reads uh, the effects. A detachment using this Rite of War may take Headhunter kill teams as troops choices and fast attack choices. If an army includes a detachment using this Rite of War, then the Slay the Warlord secondary objective if it is in use in the battle being played, and hopefully it is, is worth an additional plus two victory points to the controlling player of a detachment with this right of war. During the first game turn, all units composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type and Legiones Astartes Alpha Legion special rule gain the Shrouded 5 plus special rule while at least 12 inches away from an enemy unit. That's fantastic. Uh, now the limitations, all models with the vehicle unit type in a detachment using this right of war must begin play in reserves. A detachment using this right of war must also include more fast attack choices than heavy support choices. Quite an impact on how you're gonna build. So what are the pros here? Uh, headhunters. Headhunters are a lot of fun, very fluffy for Alpha Legion units and can do some serious damage uh, by picking off various characters with their precision shots. Now, uh, when it comes to using the box set, you can 
I assume, upgrade those Mark VI six Beakies with the Headhunter upgrades that you get from Forge World. I don't think that'd look too strange. I think it's actually gonna look pretty good. Uh, so this build is gonna make much better use of the box set than the, uh, the coils of Hydra at Rite of War. It's also a lot more flexible in its approach to achieving missions. Uh, the coils of Hydra army build is really, it's gonna do one thing. It's gonna be super aggressive, right up in their face, uh, it's only got one approach to really do what you need to do, uh, and it's not great at scoring objectives and holding objectives as such. So I think the, the Headhunter, Leviathal, uh, Rite of War gives you a lot more flexibility in the way you play. So you're not gambling on keeping the majority of your army off the table in the early game. This is, you know, just putting three units on the table can be can be a little dangerous. And uh, and this one, you're, you're not taking that risk. Uh, it also plays to the Alpha Legion strengths and Legion special rule a lot more. What I talked about before, the, the game plan that you want to take advantage of lives and obfuscation with those longer range units and, and that counter assault piece, this Rite of War definitely plays to that in, in a better way. Now, what are the cons? <laughs> Vehicles have to begin the game in reserves. I assume that includes transports. So... That's rough. Uh, so this right of war is not going to see many vehicles really at all. I'd probably I'd probably leave them at home if going down this direction. Uh, it does need more fast attack choices and heavy support choices, which which is fine because most of those vehicles are in the heavy support, and we've decided to to, to leave them behind. Um, and look, fast fast attack is definitely supporting what you want to do with this in, in a bigger way, and we'll get to that in a second. So what are the impacts on army building? The most glaring impact is that you're potentially not going to want to include any vehicles or transports in an army build using this ride war. As I said, you, you want to hit hard and fast with this army. Uh, so I want to build a force full of infantry, cavalry, and dreadnoughts. First things first, we're here for the headhunter kill teams. These are so spicy, and while I'll keep a deep dive on unit rolls for another day and unit rules, let's just say you're going to want at least two of these. Be aware that, while these can be taken as troops, I'd be more inclined to take them as fast attack, opening up my heavy support squads, and still include some more traditional troops choices that have the line unit subtype. Tactical squads probably being the go-to and still useful here. Just for narrative sake, you're going to want to take a saboteur console, either putting him in one of your kill teams or running solo with his false colors special rule. Just because it's cool, it fits what you're doing, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Alpha Legion is special and can do it, so why wouldn't you? Now you can play this army in a number of ways. You can utilize the organic infiltrate of the kill teams and the three units Alpharius or Armilus Dynat, it should be mentioned if you're going for a cheaper option, uh, that they give it to, to get right up in the face of the opponent as quickly as possible. Or you could use that infiltrate and redeploy shenanigans to position your kill teams to outflank the opponent and dominate midfield objectives, while still drawing an opponent into a solid firebase of heavy support squads and counter assault units. Indeed, you could build an army to take advantage of both styles of play and let your opponent's force determine your course of action. If the opponent can outshoot you, you infiltrate your entire army onto their doorstep. If the opponent is close combat focused, use your kill teams as midfield speed bumps and sit back and shoot. Other units I want to take in this army include those counter assault units I talked about previously. That could be Terminators, but a 15 to 20 man assault squad gives you greater flexibility. But hey, why not both? You really want to have two beefy assault units to take advantage of Alpharius' infiltrating handouts if the opponent outshoots you, which leaves one infiltrating spot for a Contemptor Dreadnought. These tough lads do great work in this army as they get around that vehicle limitation and you don't need to worry about your kill teams taking up elite slots. An infiltrating dreadnought also sounds intense and I love it. If you have the points and the heavy support slot, noting the right of war limitation, you could even go a Leviathan dreadnought here as the infiltrating ability helps it out with its commonly short ranged but powerful firepower. Note that if you've gone the cheaper option with Armillus Dynat as your warlord, then you can't infiltrate anything other than infantry. So if you want infiltrating dreadnoughts, it's got to be Alpharius. As I've already mentioned, I want to spend my heavy support force organization slots on multiple heavy support squads that will do a lot of work in this army, taking advantage of that first turn shrouded and forcing your opponent to come to you. Laz cannons and missile launchers are the priority here as the kill teams have your anti-infantry firepower largely covered. For fast attack, jet bikes and land speeders of both type continue that theme of flexibility able to support an all-infiltrating army, but also providing units to act as distractions and speed bumps if playing more conservatively. When it comes to what units you're going to want to select for your one reward of treachery choice, 
It really comes down to taste. Have some fun with it. Alpha Legion specific units aren't necessarily fast or combat focused, so something to fill that gap would work perfectly fine. Perhaps a unit of Blood Angel Dawnbreaker cohort for adding some serious punch to that counter assault, or a White Scars Golden Kashegg Squadron for hunting down vehicles that your heavy support squads can't get line of sight to. Both of these Rite of Wars give you really interesting options for army builds, and hopefully I've given you a decent idea of how to build them out to keep the army narratively focused, but also taking best advantage of the Alpha Legion special rules, effects, and limitations. When it comes to Alpha Legion Warlord traits, only the Mobius Configuration Warlord trait has any significant impact. Note that it is a Loyalist Warlord trait, but unless I'm mistaken, no Alpha Legion units or characters are identified as being traitors, so you still get your full selection, which is a great nod to the narrative and lots of fun. The Mobius Configuration Warlord trait reads, This Warlord trait may only be selected with a model with the Loyalist Allegiance. An army whose warlord has this trait counts any allied detachment that has any version of the Legiones Astartes special rule as though it had the fellow warrior's level of allegiance, regardless of the variant of the Legiones Astartes special rule it has. Units from this allied detachment that are removed as casualties do not score victory points for the opposing player, regardless of the mission objectives in play. And if all models that were part of the allied detachment have been removed as casualties at the end of the battle, the controlling player gains plus one victory point. No unit in the allied detachment may make reactions of any kind, but the first unit in the primary detachment to make a reaction each turn does not use up a point of the controlling player's reaction allotment when making that reaction. This encourages a whole other playstyle, essentially setting up an allied detachment to fall upon the swords of your enemy and giving the rest of your army more reactions. I think it's really powerful. It also gives access to pretty much, well, it does, any Legion, uh, for, and in a, a, a way that is powerful to the Alpha Legion player. It's a really good Warlord trait. Um, so you, you've just, you've got to love it. I think it's fantastic. You could really pick any Legion here as the Alpha Legion were betraying loyalists and traders alike all over the place. But from a narrative perspective, a White Scars, Raven Guard, Sons of Horus, or World Eaters Detachment are all great choices. And do what you want to do with this smaller force which is get up in the enemy's face. I'd focus the allied detachment on combat units or short range powerful firepower that the enemy simply can't ignore. Leaning more towards those units that natively have higher movement can infiltrate or deep strike to save on transport costs. These units could then act as that speed bump I talked about in the Headhunter Leviathan analysis, giving you another way to play that takes full advantage of the Alpha Legion special rules, but without the vehicle limitations of the right of war. Furthermore, your speed bump units now are not going to give victory points to the enemy. It's, just, it's really good from an, from an objective and from a point scoring perspective. I think this Warlord trait is out of control. Now, if you want to include a number of vehicles in your Alpha Legion army, this Warlord trait is a great compromise and a fun way to build an army. Probably the best way to go rather than the rights of war that we've seen. And you could pick a generic right of war out of the, out of the core rulebook. You get to paint up a detachment from another legion and then run them to your deaths. What more could an Alpha Legion player want? I'd keep the allied detachment relatively small. I don't know what the rules are yet around allied detachments, but I imagine it has to be less than your, your main detachment. Uh, certainly less than half your points, uh, as you'd be throwing them straight into the jaws of the enemy to ensure they will die. You want them to die. Meanwhile, focus your Alpha Legion detachment on longer range firepower and units to secure and hold objectives. The tougher, the better. And that brings us to the end of our Legion build for Alpha Legion. Thank you so much for watching. How are you planning to build your Alpha Legion army? Are you going with the Legion Rites of War or another direction? Let us know in the comments below. Importantly, make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for heresy.